Welcome to Season 3 of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big topics into small bites. I'm your host, Dr. Amy Newsel, and I'm joined by my dear friend, women's health and fertility expert, naturopathic physician, Kate Namas, to break down infertility, hormones, and the whole baby-making shebang. This week, I think it's really important to talk about actually getting an infertility evaluation and who actually does that. And Kate, this is all your department. So who does this thing? Yes. Well, my short answer is a reproductive endocrinologist and an infertility specialist, if possible. That's that's our gold standard. Not everybody can access that. Not everybody can afford that. Right. My and mom, if you're in a tiny town... Right. Yes. My more nuanced answer is that you can get the beginnings of an infertility evaluation in a small town from your primary care doctor, your naturopath in certain licensed states, or your ob guy. But eventually there are certain imaging tests that will be needed to be done or potentially need to be done that will be by an infertility specialist. Okay. Okay. So that's a drive to a big city issue. Right. Especially if your ob guy says, hey, we did the initial evaluation. I'm not seeing the answers I need to see. We need to do the complete workup. There may be a drive for that. Got it. Got it. And so this is happening, as we said in the first episode, after 12 months of unprotected frequent intercourse, if you're under 35 years of age or six months, if you're over, is that correct? That's right. Exactly. Mm hmm. Perfect. Okay. So what, what actual, what actual diagnostic information do you need from both partners? Like what is complete? Yeah. Okay. So since a couple may have multiple factors that are contributing to their infertility, the complete initial diagnostic evaluation should be performed on both couples. So we don't miss anything important or like we've talked about waste valuable time. Yes. This eval which we do in both parts of the couple, will detect almost all of the most common causes of infertility if they're present. And normally we recommend that we do it concurrently. Okay. Yeah. And then what's included in it is you've got a history, a physical exam, a semen analysis for the male partner, menstrual history, laboratory tests, and some assessment of the fallopian tubes and uterus. Right. Okay. And so is this the same for couples who've had previous children? Then it is the same evaluation. What would be the most common labs that people would see, like blood labs or yep. lab testing? Mm -hmm. So the common labs will include assessing for ovarian reserve. That mm -hmm. may include a cycle day three follicle stimulating hormone and estradiol, and a test called anti-mullerian hormone or AMH and then some imaging called an antral follicle count, and then also a thyroid stimulating hormone level to do a quick screening for thyroid. Okay, and this is just checking to see that everything is working the way it should and that there are eggs present. Right, exactly. For example, if you ran the estradiol on, and FSH on cycle day three and saw that the woman was in premature ovarian failure, um, we would have a very different path to go down than if on cycle day three, we saw, oh, great, she's, she's young, healthy, her cycle looks like it should be, she's ovulating every month. That's a very different path to go down for someone with infertility versus, oh, her ovaries have stopped sending the appropriate signals for monthly ovulation right. <laughs> or totally. they senesced and she's going through early menopause. Right. And so then they also have to assess the uterus physically and fallopian tubes. Is that correct? Exactly. Right. So in that kind of pre or early initial evaluation that a non-specialist could do, the ob guine the ND, the primary care doctor, we're going to get those easy, simple labs that anyone can draw and most physicians can interpret. Okay. And then once we get those back, or if time is of the essence, then the doctor is also going to run some of those imaging tests. Okay. Um, and in select couples, they'll assess the fallopian tubes and the uterus, and that could include an HSG, which I'm gonna botch the name, but here I go, hysterosalpingography. <laughs> um, well, I don't know why you would botch that name, Kate. Yes, I know, I don't know why. Right. Um, where they shoot some dye into our fallopian tubes to look and see if there's a nice clear path between our ovaries and our uterus. Okay. 
Um, they might also assess the fallopian tubes in uterus with the hysteroscopy or ultrasound or laparoscopy. And that would absolutely be either by an ob or a fertility specialist. Right. And they're right. looking at the fallopian tubes in the uterus to see if there's a mass in the uterus, if there's a mass in the ovary, if we have endometriosis. So these different tests are looking for different causes of infertility. Well, and that totally makes sense. I mean, if there's something already there, hard time for baby to move in. Exactly, right. And so I do wanna point out here just for a second, because my thing is genetics, mm -hmm. is that in this early round of testing and diagnosis, there's typically no genetic assessment done. If you suspect that you might have a gene SNP like MTHFR, it can be a really good idea to proactively test on your own. This is not typically something that doctors do in the early phase of things, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so just having that information can be really helpful because it does change also the way you want to treat yourself during a pregnancy and as you're preparing for a pregnancy. And so, you know, it really helps to know up front and not find out like when you're you know, oh, I've been pregnant for three weeks. Yay. I've right. already missed the neural tube formation phase. Right. And so may not have had the nutrients I need. Exactly. Yep. And usually in mainstream medicine, that genetic testing is going to come up for couples that have recurrent pregnancy loss. They'll get referred for genetic testing. So that's going to be much later in the game. Mm -hmm. um, or they'll refer if they have like un unexplained infertility. And maybe someone has a hunch then that there's a genetic cause. So that might be when I see couples getting referred for genetic testing. But I absolutely agree with you, especially when we're doing preconception care. It's nice to know those SNPs going into our preconception care. Yes, absolutely. Because it does change the way we're going to actually care. And, you know, one of those pivotal nutrients, folate or folic acid, is, is going to be the thing, right? That's the, wow. that's the pivot point. So mm -hmm. it really does matter. Totally. Um, and then you mentioned recurrent pregnancy loss. Uh, is there a different workup in that situation? There is, and we should probably do a whole episode on that. We can do that. <laughs> yeah, they'll get the initial diagnostic workup, but then they're going to be looking at some other causes of um, recurrent pregnancy loss, which might include the genetic testing. It might include testing the products of conception after another pregnancy loss or another miscarriage. It can include some other laboratory testing, looking at like clotting disorders. So there's a very specific algorithm that we use once couples have had a few miscarriages where we add on some additional labs to assess what's going on. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of a different different starting place than just the couple who can't conceive. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Makes sense. Well, thank you. You're so welcome. And I think that a lot of couples can feel a lot of stress going into these tests, mm -hmm. but I would like to say that they give us a lot of hope when we can get some answers and we can start making some focus changes that can lead to a different outcome. So you know, go to some therapy sessions, get some love from your partner, but do get that testing, get that workup because it can get us one step closer to baby in arms. Oh, I completely agree with that. I think a lot of people have anxiety about it, right? Because nobody wants to hear like, oh, you have this situation, no. right? Except no. if you don't know you have that situation, it's not going to get fixed. So, right. Exactly. Yeah. If we don't test the thyroid, then we don't know if you're hyper or hypothyroid and what exactly. medicine you need. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's better to get to baby in arms, even if it means some difficult days. Yeah. Then exactly. to not. Yeah. Yay. Okay. Thanks lady. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening today and sharing your time with us. If you like this show, please follow and maybe even leave a review or like and subscribe if you happen to be watching on YouTube. Visit namesnd.com -E or to healthwiththat.com for more information about Drs. Kate and me, Dr. Amy. 